21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Where was the car parked? 61st and what? Were the doors locked? Yeah. What kind of a car is it? What do you You're mean? in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the oh, nerve center. Nice. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. You come into the station house. We'll have to take a report from you. That's right. It's between Lexington and 3rd. As soon as you can. Yeah. All right. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. At 6, after I had turned out the platoon, interviewed an applicant for a tow truck license, and cleaned up considerable paperwork, I instructed Sergeant Waters on T.S. to have sector car number 1 come by the station house and take me on patrol of the precinct. Patrol of the precinct by the commanding officer, in addition to responding to emergency radio calls as they occur, generally involves a personal check of conditions concerning which complaints from the public have been received. In connection with the investigation of such a complaint, I instructed Patrolman Coley, the operator of sector car number one, to drive to 88th Street and Madison Avenue. At 7.20 p.m., we were in the car proceeding uptown on Park Avenue in the 70s. The weather was cold and extremely windy. So, when the landlord came to collect the rent, I happened to be home. Uh-huh. I invited him to come in the living room and sit down. He said, you're almost two weeks late with the rent, Mr. Coley. I said, I know it. I said, I wrote you a letter and told you we wouldn't pay the rent until you sent somebody to fix the refrigerator. He said, I was stalling him, trying to pull my badge that I was a cop on him. He was going to write the commissioner and make a complaint against me. How do you like that, Captain? Well, what did you say? Well, I told him to write anybody he wanted to write. Still wasn't going to get the rent until the refrigerator was fixed. I don't know what these guys think they can get away with. Well, some of them try, Coney. Yes, sir. After the light changes, take a left into 77. Go up Madison the rest of the way. Yes, sir. effort to act calm, aren't they? Yes, sir. When the light changes, take off behind them. We get a look at the registration plate. Yeah, but two guys that didn't own a new Cadillac, that's them. All right, there's the light. Let them go ahead. Okay. Illinois car. I don't remember any Illinois Cadillac in your line. Let's talk to him, Coley. Yes, sir. Watch out, they don't try to pull away from you. They could, too. All right, give them the horn. Pull over there! Pull over! Don't pull over. No, they're not. It's okay. Lock them off on this stop. Yes, sir. I'll take the driver. Yes, sir. You take the other side. But we want to find out. Let's see the registration. And your operator's license. Oh, I forgot to take them. They're on addresses. We made every light, didn't we? Yeah, every light. You. Keep your hands up there where I can see them. Is this your car? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, no. Well, who's this? A friend of ours. Right, Ruby? Yeah, right. A friend lent us. He lent you the car, but not the keys, huh? Well, you see what happened. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. All right, I'll keep them there. I'll keep them. And they got a jumper on the ignition, Captain. Are those your suitcases in the back? Not of his. Who said they were mine? I didn't. Come on. Out this way. Out of the car? Come on. Both of you. Now, keep your hands where we can see them. You. Lean up against the car there. Yeah? Right there, yeah. Come on around, Coley. Yes, sir. 
All right, you. Right next to him. I, for one, would like to know what this is all about. So would I. Lean up there. I'm leaning, I'm leaning. Okay, Captain, I got him covered. All right. You first. Hold still. I got nothing. What are you worried about? I'm carrying nothing. Oh. What do you call this? A pen knife. That's what it is. Ain't a guy entitled to have a pen knife? Not with an eight-inch blade. Well, I use it to peel apples. I like apples. All right, just keep quiet. How are you? Hold still. Look, I was doing nothing. He asked me if I'd like to take a ride. I asked you. Quiet. I got two witnesses to prove he asked me. His cousin Scar, he said. What cousin? All right. I got no cousin. What's your name? Me? You. Leon Gamer. Where do you live? 361 South Street. In Manhattan? Yeah, in Manhattan. How old are you? 22. Where'd you steal the car? Belongs to his cousin. I thought you said it belonged to your friend. His cousin is my friend. I got no cousin. What's your name? Protea, Reuben Protea. Where do you live? 289 East 109th Street. Not my cousin. I got no cousin. Then who is the man? What man? Okay. What man? That's enough. All right, enough. Keep your eye on them, Coley. Yes, sir. I'll ring in for some help. Come on, just stay like that. Don't move. Okay. 681 to Central. Okay. At 79th Street and Park Avenue, northeast corner. We require assistance in handling two prisoners in a stolen car. K. Okay. Okay, Coley, they're sending another car over. Yes, sir. I did nothing. Nothing. Don't say my cousin. I got no cousin. Go for a ride. Get some air. That's all I was invited to do. Well, you've got another invitation now, mister. To a party. You're giving it. Within two minutes, sector car number four, patrolman Joe Ryan, operator, and patrolman Daniel Ziegler, recorder, arrived at the scene. A more thorough search of the prisoner's persons was conducted. No additional weapons were found. We also made a search of the 1953 Cadillac sedan. The ignition had been jumped to enable the thieves to start the car without a key. Although the favorite tool of car thieves, a beer can opener, was found on the floor of the car, there were no marks on any doors or windows indicating that the car had been broken into. In the back seat were two large suitcases and two smaller ones. The glove compartment was locked, so was the luggage compartment. Sergeant Fred Burns arrived on the scene with his car and operator. Sector car number four was instructed to resume patrol. Both prisoners were loaded into the space behind the front seat of sector car number one and were driven to the station house in the custody of patrolman Coley and myself. Sergeant Burns followed, driving the Cadillac, which he parked in the passageway next to the station. The two prisoners carrying the luggage that was in the car were taken directly upstairs to the 21st Detective Squad by Patrolman Coley and myself. Hey, go on, move along. We're moving, we're moving. Stuff is heavy. That way. Go ahead. Why I gotta listen to you, I don't know. Listen to me what? Okay. Every time I listen to you, I wind up in a jam. Every time. Inside, drive up Park Avenue, he said. There's lots of Cadillacs on Park Avenue. Well, ain't that Park Avenue's lousy with Cadillacs? Over there to the desk. So why did this one have to stick out like a covered wagon? Where do I put the bag? Hold on over for a minute. You catching, Novak? Yeah. What you got there, the Brinks Bandit? Hello, Captain. Novak? Well, we jumped him on 79th and Park driving a Cadillac. Not this. Huh, I wouldn't expect it to be. Well, it's a free country, ain't it? I could own a Cadillac. Yeah, you could, but if I were you, I'd buy a pair of shoes first. So where'd you steal the car? Well, look at me, look at him. I was just along for the ride. You were driving, so that makes who along for the ride? Me, that's who. Where do you want the suitcases, Cap? Hold on to them. Look, what is this, Grand Central Station? Hold on to all them. All right, all right. You don't have to take offense just because I made a remark. Where's Lieutenant King, Novak, back in his office? Yes, sir. Uh, you, what's your name? Me? I'll be in uh, there with you. Him. Yes, sir. Proceed, or Ruben Proceed. All right, where do you live? Captain Kennelly. Hello, Matt. Captain, leave the door open, would you? Yeah, sure. Get off the heat and hair, gets ice cold. Leave it on, burns up. That radiator knows no middle ground. Well, what have we got out there? I was on patrol with Coley. We jumped a couple of thieves in the Cadillac. Oh, that's good work, Captain. The car's got Illinois plates. There were some suitcases in the back seat. Uh-huh. The car's not in the alarms or in the automobile lift. They say where they got it, Captain? No, they didn't say anything yet, Matt. They will. Have a look at them. Sure. You know, they look like a couple of users to me, Matt. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. You don't need a job to have an occupation, do you? Oh, that's true. That's that's very true. All yeah. right, what's your occupation? Well, you know the guys that put down linoleum and tiles on the floors? Yeah. Is that what you do? No. I'm a helper. 
The linoleum layer, he says, uh, hey, Leon, get this, get that. So I get it for him. That's my occupation. Yeah. Only I ain't working. What do you call stealing Cadillac? Who's this? A new ingredient has been added. Lieutenant King. Hey, we'll be a lieutenant and a captain both. That's better than last time, huh? Yeah, we're getting up in the world. When was last time? When? I don't know. Three, four weeks ago. Before Christmas. Before Christmas, huh, Ruby? After Thanksgiving. Oh, I'll kill him. Where was it? Down in my neighborhood in the village. All we had then was detectives. Now a lieutenant and a captain. Boy, this is living. Yeah, living. I should join you. Where was it? Six precinct? Yeah, I think so. Is that right, Ruby? I, I don't know. The police stations all look alike. What'd you get picked up for? Stealing out of cars. They caught us with a key that we took out of a car down there. What happened to the case? Oh, we're right on bail. $2,000 bail. 1000 for him, 1000 for me. So you're out thieving again. Oh, well, listen, the bondsman cost us $50 a piece. We gotta pay from some way, don't we? We gotta live, don't we? We gotta live high. High on a hog. That's us, right, Ruby? Right, high on a hog. Stick around, boys. We'll show you how to come down a notch. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Detectives of the 21st Squad under the supervision of Lieutenant King began to make a case of grand larceny automobile against the two suspects, Leon Gamer and Ruben Protea. As required by law, the suspects were fingerprinted by Detective Novak. The locked suitcases found on the rear seat of the automobile were moved into Lieutenant King's office. The 6th Detective Squad in Greenwich Village was telephoned for information concerning their arrest in that precinct and the charge of grand larceny already pending against them. Although it was obvious the car had been stolen, no report of the theft was in the alarm, nor had one been received by the Communications Bureau. As frequently happens, it appeared that stolen property had been recovered before the owner was even aware it was missing. While the arresting officer, Patrolman Coley, kept one suspect under guard in the squad office, the other, Leon Gamer, was questioned by Lieutenant King in his office in the presence of myself and Detective Novak. Pretty suitcase, isn't it, Leon? Uh, personally, I don't like the color, but it's pretty, yeah. And heavy. You're telling me. I had to lug it up the stairs. It's heavy. There must be a lot of good stuff in there. Maybe telephone books. Suits, ties, shirts, maybe even jewelry or money. Yeah, maybe. One should try to open it. Or any of the others. Oh, and I ask you, would that be honest? Look, Lee, I'm saved your comedy routine for the tombs. We're trying to get someplace here. I want to find out who that stuff belongs to. I know, I tell you. You think i got to be personally acquainted with somebody before I touch their car? My point is, you couldn't have been far from where you lifted the car before you were jumped by the officers. No, well, not too far, I don't guess. Because if it was more than a mile away, you'd have had the catches on that bag, pried open to see what was inside. Look, I don't know exactly where it was. I don't carry a map around in my head. We pulled up together for that light on 77th and Park. How long before that was it? Not long. Was it below 72nd Street? 72nd Street? Yeah, it could be. Then you drove at least six blocks on Park Avenue. Oh, more. Much more. Was it farther downtown than 72nd Street? You got the car? Look, Lieutenant, you want me to be honest with you? I want you to make the effort. You want the whole story what happened? Yes. I got nothing to hide. I'm hooked. You'll have the patience. I'll give you the best of my recollection. All right, give it to us. I'll get it, Lieutenant. Okay. Hey, Leon, the best of your recollection. 21st Squad, Detective Novak. Let's have it. I can't concentrate with somebody on the phone. Captain Kennelly, Sergeant Waters on TS for you. Okay. So can you wait a second? All right. We'll wait Thanks, Novak. Yes, sir. Captain Kennelly. Sergeant Waters on TS, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Yes, that's called the 17th rang up here. Yeah. A motorcycle patrolman skidded out a patch of ice coming off the East River Drive at 53rd Street. Well, if you heard that... officer back and tell him I'm on my way. And have a car come by the house for me. Yes, sir. Cop hurt in the 17th, Matt. I've got division tonight. I'll have to go investigate it. Pretty bad. A broken leg, they think. Well, I once broke a leg jumping over a fence when I was a kid. We don't want your life history, Leon. Just what happened tonight. Look, if he's going to go, let him go. I can't concentrate with the interruptions. The captain has to wait for a car to come in and get him. You don't worry about what we do. You worry about yourself. We'll give you plenty on your mind. Now, what happened? Well, I met Ruby. Well, I'll tell you if you give me the chance. Met him in a bar and grill on 110th Street. We were sitting there having a couple of beers, and he said, how much dough you got? I said, why? Well, he said his brother wanted some of the money back, the 50 bucks he borrowed from his brother to pay the barnsman. I said, don't look at me. I'm living from hand to mouth, too. I didn't pay back the money I borrowed to pay the barnsman. 
And we got to talking about how the trial is set next month, that even if we cop a plea, we're sure to get no less than two years of peace out of it. We've got a lawyer to pay, and we still owe for the bail. And here we are with not five dollars between us. Not even enough for a good jolt, huh? Oh, look, don't get me wrong. I don't mess around with that stuff. Just chippy once in a while. I got no big habit. So you got five dollars between you. Yeah. Well, I don't know who mentioned it first, me or Ruby, but one of us said, let's go downtown and see if we can make some money. So we finished the beer and got on the Madison Avenue bus. We went downtown. Wait till you get off. I got to have to ask Ruby that. I got no idea. He said, come on, I got off. We walked around a little bit. I don't know, we saw this caddy parked there. I looked in, and there were these suitcases in the back. I looked at Ruby, and we walked by. He said, a cinch. The button isn't down on the back door. So we walked to the corner, turned around, and come back, just like we own the car. We walked up, opened the door, and got in. I was behind the driver's seat. One, two, three. Ruby was on the floor and had the ignition jump. Like a flash. You know, he's quick, that kid. He's got a real talent. He said, go. I went, and that's that. Well, I'll see you, man. Okay, Captain. So long, Captain. All right. Don't go away mad. I'll, uh, check with you, huh, Matt? Yes, sir. Well, looks like you'll have to go to court in the morning, Cooley. Yes, sir. Hey, what's that for, Russ? Can't you keep quiet for two seconds? Well, I try. Don't say I don't try. Had a dentist appointment, but uh, that won't be hard to cancel. All right. I'll leave instructions with the desk officer that you're to go on reserve after you get those two books in. Yes, sir. Thanks, Captain. It was a good caller. Hey, what gives in there? What's he telling him? You'll get your turn, Ruby. Well, see you later, Tony. Yes, sir. Good boss? Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a cop. Well, at least you got to know a few. There was this cop over there on my block, a regular guy. I wanted to be like him. And I got to hate him. Yeah? Yeah, he took me in. Grabbed me by the collar, took me in. And for what? For nothing, for stealing. So I decided not to be a cop. Well, he had a pretty good reason. What's he telling him in there? How much could there be to say? You think I could talk? That Leon, boy, chew your arm off. I got nothing against cops. I even like you. Thanks. Oh, but that's nothing. Don't be too glad I like everybody. Even Leon. If anybody could like Leon. He ain't very particular about his friends. What's he telling him, do you think? All about the deal, I guess. Well, he can leave something for me to say. I'll go in there and stand like a dope. They'll know everything i got to tell him. Oh, here they come. All right, go over there and sit down, Leon. Over where? Over here with him? That's right. Come on, Ruby. Hey, what'd you tell him, Leon? Get going, Ruby. My life history, A to Z. Well, what'd you tell him about me? Come on. Yeah, all right. Just don't make me out a liar to them. How could I tell him? I don't know what you said. Inside. Sit down over here. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. I want a lawyer. You can have a million lawyers. I can't afford a million. All I want is one. All right, we'll call whatever lawyer you want. Tell them to be in felony court at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Felony court that's downtown? 100 Center Street, Criminal Courts Building. All right, talk to me after I talk to my lawyer. Right now, I got nothing to say. Well, uh, Leon had plenty to say. Well, that's his business. I don't care. Sure thinks a lot of you. I can't say vice versa. Thinks you're the most talented boy he knows. Doesn't think anybody can snap a lock on a car, get in, and jump the ignition as fast as you. Did he say that? Yeah. That's nice of him, you know. Said he can't think of a thief he'd rather work with. I didn't think Leon had a compliment in his body. Twelve seconds is your record. Nah. Break open the door, jump the ignition, start the car in twelve seconds. Nah, not twelve. I could maybe fifteen, not twelve. That's what he said. Uh, well, you know, Leon ain't no slouch either, you know. Uh-huh. Of course, I handled that caddy tonight, but I've seen him turn some fast tricks, too. Eh, uh, between us, I guess we could get in almost any lot. Any lot. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, we'll give you a new challenge, Ruby. Yeah, what's that? Sing Sing. You try the locks up there. By 8.45, no alarm had come through on the Cadillac sedan with Illinois license plates. Lieutenant King had been in touch with both the auto squad and the correspondence bureau of the central office. It was agreed that if the auto were not heard from within another hour, a telegram would be sent to the Illinois State Highway Patrol at Springfield with a request that the name of the owner be ascertained and a check made at the residence. Meanwhile, I was at the 17th Precinct Station House on East 51st Street. 
There, I entered in the blotter the results of my investigation of the injury to the motorcycle patrolman. I'd been to Bellevue Hospital and got a statement from both the officer and the doctor attending him. I'd seen the sector men and the sergeant who responded to the original call concerning the accident. In cases involving injury to a police officer in the line of duty, the manual of procedure requires a complete and immediate investigation of the facts by the commanding officer of the precinct or a captain on night duty in the division because of the possibility of sick leave with full pay and eventual disability retirement of the man. I returned to the 21st at 9.05 p.m. The car pulled up in front of the station house, and as I got out, I instructed the operator to pick up his partner and resume patrol. I crossed the sidewalk and started up the steps of the station house. Excuse me. Yes? This is the police station, isn't it? That's right, yes. Go ahead, Alicia. Seems nothing is safe anymore. Nothing. Thank you very much. What's the trouble, sir? Uh, go ahead. Oh, thank you. I uh, want to talk to the person in charge here. Well, I'm the captain in command of the precinct. Well, I do. I'm sorry, I didn't see your insignia in the dark, didn't you? Oh, what an old, smelly building, Edward. Are the police stations in Chicago this old? How would I know? Captain, our car has been stolen. Oh, has it? Well, he just told you it had. Uh, what kind of car? A Cadillac sedan. You said you were from Chicago? Yes, that's right, Chicago. Captain, it's absurd the way criminals are allowed to run around on the streets of New York. To steal our car from practically under our nose, that's no way to treat visitors, is it? Well, sir, I, I don't think thieves stop to find out if their victim is a New Yorker or a visitor. They're out to steal, not discriminate. I don't believe you told me what your name was. Private. Edward J. Private. I'm Captain Kennelly. I'm Mrs. Private. How do you do, Mrs. Private? Well, if you're in charge, sir, how can we get some action? Our, our luggage was in the car, you know. We were leaving for Florida tonight, driving to Philadelphia tonight, starting out the first thing from there in the morning for Palm Beach. You have no idea what this does to our vacation. No idea. I can imagine, Mrs. Pryvin. Uh, would you excuse me just a second? We're not going to get the runaround, are we? No, sir. I've got to go over to the desk and sign the blotter. You just wait here. I'll be right back. Hello, Captain. Sergeant. A couple of messages for you. All right, I'll sign the blotter. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. What was that, mister? I didn't hear you. The bartender what? Were you speaking to the phone? Oh, he wouldn't sell you anymore, huh? No, there's nothing we can do to him. We ought to pin a medal on him. Well, you better not worry about drinking anymore tonight. Better go on home and go to sleep. Yeah? Go on home and go to sleep. I'm sure you will. You got those messages, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Mm. I, uh, I saw those people hook you. They came in the door, Captain. You want me to bail you out with them? No. No, thanks, Sergeant. This one, I want to handle myself. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Bradford. We'll go upstairs to the detectives, all right? This way, please. A lot of good it'll do. The car's gone for good. Gone, I know it's gone. And all my clothes with it. A fine place for decent people to come. New York. <laughs> uh, did you lock your car when you left it? Why, of course we locked it. Uh, through here, please. Okay, thank you. You know, even if it was locked, four suitcases on the back seat look pretty attractive to thieves. It uh, was a sedan, you say? Four doors. You uh, might have locked three. Upstairs, please. I'm positive I locked all four doors. I always do. Uh huh. Where was the car parked? On 61st Street near Park Avenue. After I finished some business, we checked out of the hotel. We were going to this restaurant, uh, Les Cargot. Uh, do you know it, Captain? Uh, I've been in there, uh, yes. That way, please. The most absurd thing in the world. Just absurd. We'll never get anything like any. Right here. Oh, thank you. Mr. Pileford, uh, no protection. There's no police protection at all. Well, if that's a complaint, Mr. Pileford, you're talking to the wrong man. I'm responsible for the police protection here. You should complain about me, not to me. Maybe I will. Over here, please. Hey, Leon, here comes the captain back again. Hi, Cap. Just sit there and be quiet. Are those men criminals? They're suspects, Mr. Pileford. 
Oh. Novak, is Lieutenant King in? Yes, sir, he is. Thank you. Captain Canelli. Inside, please. Yes. This is Lieutenant King, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Triford of Chicago, Illinois. Oh? How do you do? Mr. Mrs. Triford? Lieutenant, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Triford are looking for some fast action. That car has been stolen. And uh, some luggage. I see. I don't know what we can expect, but I want to... Do you have the registration for your car, Mr. Triford? Don't you believe that I own it? Oh, yes, I believe it. I'd like to see your registration. <laughs> Gets to be a question of who gets investigated, the victims or the thieves. Oh. There you are. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Do you mind looking on that table behind you? What? Is that your luggage? Edward, it is. Have you got the car, too? Yes, we've got it. But, uh, Edward, some of it's missing. There was more. The trunk, uh, in the trunk, there were three more bags. What about that? You've got the keys to the trunk in your pocket. We haven't touched it. The other bags are still in the luggage compartment. The car's not damaged, is it? No, not a scratch. Huh? We've got the thieves. Those two boys outside. Oh. Them. Yeah, well, does everything look all right, Alicia? Yes, I think so. I think so. Well, this vanity case has a little scratch on it. Oh, does it? Sorry. But it might have been there. Well, I, I suppose that covers everything. Not uh, quite everything, Mr. Pryphon. No? You might say thank you, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Captain. We're really deeply obliged. You're welcome, Mr. Private. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. What do you mean, Rob, lady? Held up? Oh, burglars. When did this happen? During the night? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The front door, huh? Well, what's the address there? Did you say 1405 or 1409? The candy store. Yeah. Well, what did they and say? And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, yeah. every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Ethel Everett, John Sylvester, Bill Lipton, Mandel Kramer, John Martin, Wendell Holmes, and Harold Stone. Written and directed by Stanley Niff. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.